friends and enemies No reason to worry or fuck with the knee Who am I? What's my name? Priscilla Poppycock, and it's my game Ready to slay, I'm painted up My legs are crossed, then I filled my cup With sassy cues and some wicks to gag My lips are gloss, addition in drag Dishin, dishin, dishin in drag Hold your pearls, Priscilla's in fashion, nipped and tucked and ready for action. Guess galore and games to play, cue spotlight, don't look away. Glitter and lashes on every curve, cinched up tight, I'm ready to serve. The saucy tea to make your tail wag, the curtains up, the dish in drag. Hello, my kittens! Oh, here we are again! Fancy that we'd be in the same place on a Monday night! Ah! I, for one, am titillated that you are here! And do we have a show for you? Yes, yes, yes! Oh, first off, I need to say a special thanks to my little drag sister who got ready with me tonight. Dee Dee, you are beautiful and hilarious. And if you have a little drag inside and want a safe space to talk and put on some makeup, you contact Priscilla Poppycox. We can do this together, yes! Before we get started, we have a little trivia to get you all thinking on your toes right now, okay? And if you're wearing high heels, take them off, honey. It's late at night. So the first trivia question is, last week on the show, it was someone's birthday. Who was it? Now you just have to put a comment in the Facebook feed and the first person to answer that with the correct answer is going to get a little prize. Oh, I can't wait to see who wins. Someone's birthday. Who was it? Mm. Now, it is time for some news, everyone. Yes, it is. Oh, I've been sitting on this to tell you for some time and I'm getting sore. So here it is. When Dishin' and Drag started, I knew that I needed a little intro thing to get it all going. And which you heard me at the beginning of every show, it started out being a little spoken word. And then with some help from the maestros, Phil Burns and Harry Burns, oh, we created a song. And that's what you hear at the beginning of every Dishin' and Drag. But that's not all, everyone. I am happy to announce that after some hard work, sweat, and a little tears today, we have released Priscilla Poppycox's brand new song called Living for Drag. Yes, yes, yes. It is on iTunes. It is on TikTok. It is on Spotify. It's on every medium. And I just want to tell you all right now that any one who downloads the song and buys it, the money, the proceeds will go to the Penobscot Theater Company. Yes, yes, yes. So, Download that song and do a little dancey, dancey, pop, pop. I can't wait for you to hear a little living for drag. Oh, and a special thanks to Harry Burns and Phil Burns. I cannot accurately express how much gratitude I have for you. You are simply the best. Oh, we are just all so excited to bring this song to you. So please, 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 please take a listen and support. Living for drag. Oh, gosh, I don't know about you, but I wanted to celebrate National Margarita Day. I hope you are all celebrating. Now, honey, I don't do tequila because of an unfortunate incident in Puerto Vallarta in 1922, but I will spare you the details. Since then, my relationship with that has not been the best, but no matter how many times I put it in me, I always end the night with handcuffs and not in a good way. And it is also Cook a Sweet Potato Day. <laughs> it is. So if you want to plop a sweet potato in some hot water and let it cook while you watch the show, you can enjoy some of that at the end of the show. Jesus, what am I talking about? Okay. Now, speaking of plopping in some hot water tonight for the pre-show soak. Oh, and if it's going to be a good soak, I don't want to do it alone. So tonight to help me lather up is Bangor royalty. Yes, yes, yes. And between you, me, and the lamppost. This queen is looking for her king. Oh, and this one is a contender. Every time I have seen him, I have undressed him with my thighs. Oh, eyes. I have undressed him with my eyes. He is smart. He is talented. He is sexy. And he's making me wet. Sweat. Making me sweat. Josh Gass is here from Bangor Arts Exchange. Oh, hello. Hey. Oh. How, How are, you? are you, my love? I'm doing okay. I'm doing a lot better. I, I didn't know it was not National Margarita Day or I would have come more well equipped. So. Well, that's what I'm here. I am doing public service, letting you know all the important things that are happening in the world. 
I know what I got to do right after this then. <laughs> oh, now, do you have a relationship with tequila? Yeah, not a good one. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell me all about it later. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me, the Bangor Arts Exchange, first of all, I know what it is, but can yeah. you give, tell everybody what Bangor Arts Exchange is while you're here? Yeah, sure. So the Bangor Arts Exchange is actually a collaborative project between uh, my organization, Launchpad, and uh, the Bangor Symphony Orchestra. It's a, a 200 uh, cap uh, performance venue in downtown Bangor. The, the room is actually um, over 150 years old. It was uh, built in the late 1890s uh, here in uh, uh, downtown Bangor. It predates the fire of 1911. So it's an old ballroom that was actually preserved in downtown. Um, and we do live music, we do live performance, um, and everything from live theater and live comedy to all sorts of different things that happen here. Obviously that's changed a lot with the pandemic, but uh, you know, it, it really, since 2017 when we opened, it's really become sort of um, the sort of like mid-sized, you know, performance venue, mixed performance venue in, in downtown, so. So if it's not, it's not being, we're not like doing any programming right now. Is that right? Well, we, we stopped doing programming in the spring, obviously, you know, when we were, we were shut down between March and August. We did some shows between August and November. I think we did eight shows total um, with, you know, severely limited capacity. And we, um, you know, uh, kind of like prepped the space to do it in a more sort of like club, like smaller private kind of like club, like atmosphere. And that worked okay. Um, but going into the fall, it, you know, it was just kind of uh, apparent that that was just not, you know, probably um, something that was <laughs> going to work for a variety of reasons. So we haven't done shows since then, and we probably won't be doing shows until later in the spring. But we've used this time to just sort of prep for what the rest of 2021 will look like for us. We're obviously very excited to be able to host things here again, hopefully in the not that distant future. But uh you know, it's, it's uh, still been, uh, it's been an interesting year, but it's also been a productive one for us. So now you all are doing some fundraising too right now, yeah. right? So can people, people support? Yeah. yeah, that's a great point. Thanks for bringing it up. Um, we've been doing a fundraising, fundraising campaign, campaign since um, I think late November, early December. Um, we're probably about three quarters of the way to our goal. Um, we're still trying to obviously hit that goal. Um, and that's, uh, it's been great to, to have the support that we've had thus far, you know, obviously the, it was great to see that the community really came out and helped support keeping the, the venue going during this obviously like very just sort of difficult and challenging time for us, but people can go to our website, which is bangorartsexchange.org or check us out on our Facebook page. Um, and if they'd like to give to that campaign, that would be fantastic. So. I have loved the Bangor Arts Exchange. I exchange, I don't know why I said exchange, like it's past tense, exchange. Yeah. yeah. Um, we don't want to talk about my past. So um, the the Bangor Arts Exchange was home to Penobscot Theater's production of the Sandland Diaries. Yes, it was. Oh. it was one of the better things that we've done here. One of the more fun and different things that we've done here. And I, it's like really fun to see live theater done here in, in that kind of way. We've done a few other like smaller performances, but that was one of the it's certainly the longest run show that we did here. And it was really kind of cool to see Penobscot Theater come in and you know, adapt the space and do that show. And it was a lot of fun. And I hope in the future, maybe we can do more of that because I think it's part of our sort of programming mission to have all sorts of, you know, uh, performances going on here of all, of, of all different types. So we do a lot of live music, but it's great when we get to do things like live theater too. So. Oh, it was so much fun. Some of my favorite things have been at the Bangor Arts Exchange. Like I've seen the focus group perform there, yep. which is so much fun, little improv. Yep. And one of my favorite little events that you did that I just want to say was the David Bowie night. Yeah. It was so much fun dancing. Yeah, and I, I mean, it's just like, it's, it's been hard not to be able to do those things, you know, over the last almost going on year now. But um, we just, we you know, it's kind of our, our goal from the beginning to, to obviously still be here when things get more normalized. And we're very much looking forward to being able to host here again when it's more safe to do that. Well, I will be right there. I can't wait. I can't wait. Thank I am you. writing a one woman show, honey, and it needs a stage. So you're going to- Let me know when you get that going. Bobby Cox. We will hook that up. Margarita's in your dressing room. <laughs> Are you single? I am not single. But, you know, for you. <laughs> you heard it here, folks! You heard it here! <gasps> this isn't like, a, this isn't live or anything. <laughs> Honey, no one's watching. Okay. Josh Gass, thank you so much! You're welcome. Oh, mwah, mwah, mwah. oh. Gosh, he is just oh adorable, everyone. Now he says he's taken, but I don't know how serious it is. Ooh. 
Now, let's get on with the show. Tonight, over the past year, all, this show has been coming up all the time on Dishin' and Drag. Everyone's talking about a year with Frog and Toad, and it's been so long since we've done that at the Penobscot Theater, but people remember it for so many reasons. Most of it good. So I thought, why not get those people back and find out what it was like and what they're up to now? So a year with Frog and Toad and our first guest, oh, she is truly the blonde Bernadette Peters, everyone. You have seen her act, you have seen her sing, strut and dance all over that PTC stage. And in all honesty, you might've seen her do it at the grocery store too. Oh, her energy and positivity is so contagious. We all will be performing in the grocery store by the end of this episode. God, can you imagine? It'd be like a perfect world. Everyone's dancing and singing in the grocery store. Oh, fresh off in an amazing performance in fly, Flying Solo. She is here, everyone. Christy Robinson! Hello! Oh, hello. You are beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Did you catch me dancing in the grocery store the last time I was there, which was like yesterday? <laughs> Just check out my YouTube channel. Okay. Oh, you good. You see yourself good. doing a little, little hip hop. <laughs> I love oh. dancing in the grocery store. It's awesome. Now tell me, how is your relationship with tequila? Um, we're okay. <gasps> oh, I can't wait to see what she's talking about by the end of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, so I have a little question for you before we get started. It's a who would okay. you rather, okay? All right. And some of, I'm trying to say theme to the show, A Year with Frog and Toad, but I mean, no one cares. Okay, so who, what would, mm, so who would you rather sit on a rock with, throw a rock at, or rock out with? And we would be remiss if we didn't mention the three people that I'm gonna give you. Scott Levy, Nathan Halverson, and Meredith Perry. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to have you repeat two out of the three because the only one I can remember is throw a rock at. Not that I really want to throw a rock at anyone, but mm -hmm. um, so who do you want to who do you want to sit on a rock with, throw a rock at, or rock out with? Okay, sit rock, uh, throw. So I don't know. I guess I want to throw a rock at Meredith just because I don't know. I feel like it would be um, a, an excellent war because you know she'd throw something back. I mean, she's going to pick that right back up and throw she it. She would hit me. I would miss her and she would totally knock me out cold. And I deserve it. Um, sit on a rock with um, Scott. Because he's very like, I love to chat with Levy. I think it's a delightful experience. And rock out with, I mean, Nathan. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, our director, stage manager, and choreographer extraordinaire, those three people for a year in Frog and Toad. We have them to thank for this. Well, yeah. not this, but this that's coming up. <laughs> okay, let's get someone in here. So next up, uh, we have Addition and Drag Virgin. We actually have two of them. Oh, just the way I like them. <laughs> I am so excited. You have seen this man in dramas, comedies, and musicals. He is a chameleon on that PTC stage. Or should I say a frog? Yes. He's the frog on the PTC stage. But this is sound right. He has soft shoe from lily pad to rock to tree and back in frog and toad. He is, his frog was friendly, confident, thoughtful, and caring. And he is exactly the same. Oh, Hans, step on the charme. Hello. Yo, what's up, man? How's it going? Oh, you are just beautiful. Oh, Not as beautiful as you are, good sir. Come on. Let, let, let's be honest here. Look you at are that so hair. debonair. Oh. oh, I just, this, I just put a little on tonight. Just a little, just to give me a little zhuzh. I'm, I'm very jealous. I'm super <laughs> jealous right now. I love, oh. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> We have missed you up here in Bangahore, Maine. I've missed it up there too. I miss the icy snow, the snow breezing while walking over that bridge down into downtown area. I loved it. The uh, antique shop and oh. also all the coffees. Oh, I miss it. I miss it. The antique shop. I'm setting up a booth for myself. I should be open any day. <laughs> oh, so we have a little question for you to get started, okay? Bring it. Let's do Who it. Who would you rather eat a fly with? Fly somewhere with, or 
give a good old fly swap too. Mm -hmm. Nathan, Meredith, and Scott. Well, I, I would like to give a fly probably to Scott because he's always very interesting. And I would like to see what he would do with said fly. Now to swat at, I'd have to go with Nathan because <laughs> that would be kind of fun, I think. And um, the last option, definitely to Meredith. I miss her so much. She was fantastic. And, and like, I really, all the shows there at Penobscot, she was been fantastic with, so. Oh. Well, it's easy to be fantastic when you're working with such a polite, kind, caring man like yourself. Oh, well, I, yeah, yeah, I'm totally polite and kind. I swear I am. I swear well, I haven't seen you in a long time, so let me keep my dream. Okay, I'll let you keep your dreams. I'll let you keep your dreams of that frog who I was. So, yeah. <laughs> my third guest, right next to Hans, she is a, she is a voice of a bird, the acrobatics of a squirrel, the energy of a mouse, and the dance moves of a pole. On a pole, on a mole, of a mole! Dance moves of a mole. Yes. <gasps> that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Let's just say she knows how to work around some nuts. She truly has a voice that can make the snow melt, which I would welcome up here at this point in Bangalore, Maine. I'm so excited to see this beautiful face, Rebecca Bailey. Hi. <laughs> oh, look at you. Oh, so oh. good to see you. You are a dream coming through the screen. Mm, no, you are. <laughs> I know, it's like a nightmare. How long? <laughs> a beautiful nightmare. Oh, we should write a song about that. Let's do it. Isn't there a song called The Beautiful yeah, Nightmare? Beautiful Nightmare. Oh, there is she's singing. I got her singing already. <laughs> okay, let's, before we get started, let's do a little, a little, who would you rather? Okay, who right. would you rather? I said all those things. First of all, everyone's watching. Like, why did you call her a squirrel? Well, in the show, you got to be a squirrel and a mole and a bird and what else? And a, a mouse. A I mouse. Oh, it was so fun. Okay, <laughs> who would you rather hibernate with, Aww. hallucinate with, or hydrate with? Okay. All right. And it's the same options? Yes, we okay. love them. Hibernate, hallucinate, and hydrate. All right, so I'm gonna hibernate with Scott for the same reasons, good conversation. I feel like we could talk about theater for a while. He'd keep me entertained. Um, I would hallucinate with Nathan, just because who wouldn't want to? <laughs> and then I would hydrate with Meredith because I know she'd be totally prepared. Like even if we were lost on an island or something, we would find a way to hydrate. Oh my gosh, I love that everyone has very thought out answers about all of these. <laughs> Woo, welcome. Okay, we need one more person in this room. Woo, our next guest will, can do anything and he has done everyone at PTC. Everything at PTC. <laughs> Comedies and drag, musicals and drag, dishing and drag. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Now he brought down the house every single night as that snail and his performance with his lizard just still gives me tickles. Performance as the liver, lizard still gives me tickles. Oh, he just finished flying solo at PTC and coming in hot off his hot stellar performance in Mr. Ben's Playhouse, Ben Lehman, hello! Hi Priscilla, how are you? Oh, you look amazing you. tonight. Thank you so much! <laughs> I love the hair, yes. Oh gosh, it's like I'm upside down. Um, so honey, 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 gosh, congratulations on flying solo and on Mr. Ben's Playhouse. Thank you. It's been a, a good end of the winter. Oh, you, oh my gosh. And Mr. Ben's Playhouse is streaming right now to the end of the month. It is. Yeah. It's available all episodes to binge until the 28th. So oh. you can still catch it if you haven't seen it. It's a lot you are adorable on the show, Ben. Oh, thank you. You are adorable. <laughs> Thank oh. you. I appreciate that. I had a lot of fun doing it. It was something I'd never done before. And I, I love all my puppet friends. So. <laughs> so do I. Yeah. So we have a question. Who would you rather go to a sports bar with, take the bar exam with, or leave on a sandbar? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I would leave Meredith on the sandbar because I'm pretty sure she has the ingenuity to make her way off it and back. Um, and then probably just try to hide from her for the rest of my life. 
Uh, and then what were the other ones? Oh my God. Uh, take the bar exam with Levy. <laughs> he's smart. go to a sports bar with. He's smart. And if he didn't have the answers, he would have them cribbed somewhere. I know that he would. So we would pass no matter what. And then whatever the last one, Nathan by default, but what was it? A sports bar. Oh, a sports bar. Just because, I mean, we're two of the gayest men I know. So that would be a, an amazing time to go to a sports bar with Nathan Halverson. And oh, who knows what that spark is? As it happens, as it unfolds. Oh, I love a good spark, sports bar. It's usually a bunch of men in tights running after a ball. <laughs> <laughs> which is like my Friday night. Okay. <laughs> Welcome everyone. It is so good to have you all back. I can't believe we have frog and toad and turtle and squirrel and mouse and mole and snail. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, so well, before we get started, I always do a PTC production patooey. So I'm gonna give you a show that either you were involved in or saw or have heard about. Um, and you're gonna say a word or a phrase that comes to mind or, or if there's a story, you might be able to share it if I let you. Um, so first up, we have Christy. The Great American Trailer Park Musical! <laughs> um, I just remember saying, Pippa! <laughs> Pippi <laughs> on the phone call I was trying to warn Pippi about something I don't remember what it was but I don't know desperate times man I was like Pippi he's coming for you I think he was she was gonna get like killed or something some <laughs> I don't remember what was happening someone bad I mean, it could have been anything it could have been like you gotta run in your stocking yeah <laughs> Maybe we should refer to you that way in the show. Quit that! Yeah, yeah, I mean, absolutely. That show was an absolute blast. That was so much fun. It was so much fun to do. It was great. You were hilarious. It was a hilarious. lot of fun. I mean, you got to like, eat flan, flan, flan? Uh, it, yes, that's right. It was stand by your flan. That was the... <laughs> That was the, the the food truck that I worked at, I believe. Stand by your flan. Mm -hmm. I love it. I mean, there's always a job for you there. Always. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Hans, you're up. You ready? I'm ready. State of the Union. Oh. <laughs> I, personally, you're welcome. I wanted to take you down memory lane. Thank you. Uh, suspenders. I... I, I love the show, no doubt, but the dress that I, what I was wearing, those suspenders, I hate suspenders. <laughs> they pull the pants up so much that I'm just like, how can I walk in these things? It's That's just... interesting because when I looked at the pictures of State of the Union, I saw you and I was like, Hans looks so sexy. Well, thank you. I, I greatly appreciate that. It was probably because your pants were so high. Yeah, they were very high. They were very high. <laughs> but... Yes, I mean, it was it was overall a wonderful show experience meeting everyone there. Um, and I, I wish I could go back and do it again, but the biggest thing is suspenders of that memory. So was that after Frog and Toad or was it before? I think, I think it was just before okay. uh, Frog and Toad um, because I'm just thinking about the season that they had and yeah. They went from State of the Union to a frog a year with Frog and Toad. Yeah, yeah. but I mean... Like, I, let's not stay on the same track. We're going to go somewhere else. Well, I mean, at the same time, like, I, I, you're, I, you're absolutely right. I enjoy doing just a variety of things and just going from one point to the next point and they have no connection between because, like, that's just so much fun. You know, I what? who am I and where can I go with anything? So, yeah. And that show was so cool because we did it during, an, was it during the election year? Mm -hmm. And so, like, I think the Penobscot Theater even had, like, a registered voting. You could register to vote in their lobby. Yeah. Which is, I mean, great for downtown Bangor in, the, in that yes. area. Yes. Oh, awesome. Okay. Rebecca, your show is Carousel. <laughs> I had a feeling it was great. Uh, <gasps> waltzing is my word. <laughs> waltzing. Was it because you had to, or you had to learn to, or? 
Well, I remember we had to waltz and we were uh, we were practicing the scene in the theater and then we took it outdoors, right? And so we had to figure out how to waltz like around these trees and like these other areas. And yeah, I just remember trying to figure it out on the fly outside. So that was oh fun. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I thought you were going to jump into a little, if I love you. <laughs> Gorgeous. There's still time. Practice. Yeah. Um, that was fun too. Wasn't that the first show PTC did in the summer outside, right? Yeah. They, that was the first show. Well, besides like the former Shakespeare stuff. Yeah. yeah. The first like musical outdoor summer experience. Yeah. Oh, that was so fun. It was so fun. I always loved the uh, Mr. Snow. I loved watching that one the, with Brian and oh, it was just so touching and lovely. Yeah. <gasps> what a fun little memory we have right there. I remember being as hot as hell. Okay, Ben! The Wizard of Oz. Wigs. <laughs> um, I don't know if you remember this, you, you have to, but when I would faint as the lion, my wig would not stay on. Um, and so eventually we just made a bit out of it. And I've played him twice in two different places and it happened both times. It was just a thing. The faint takes oh. your wig away and you just deal with it. So wig. <laughs> you brought the house down with King of the Forest. You were so funny. Thanks. How, I mean, how can you not bring oh. the house down with that number? It's so easy. It's so fun. What a wacky song. What a wacky song. I love that song. <laughs> oh. Now, here for you folks, Ben Lehman, go. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah. Rah. <laughs> I, what would we do if he just all of a sudden was like did the whole song oh God. I'm here for it I just I, throw I'm, my gonna say, I'm gonna sit back and just chill out <laughs> please we're waiting oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna continue her relationship with that tequila uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay Christy yes. the marvelous wonder rats oh my gosh that was a marathon it was a marathon uh, a delightful marathon, um, but it just, there were so many songs and there were so many dance steps and there was not a lot of time to breathe and think. And, <laughs> but uh, it was, it was great. I loved that show. All the music was fantastic. And it was a trip down memory lane for a lot of folks that came to see that show. And um, it was delightful. We had great costumes. My color was orange, which I was thrilled about. I love the color orange. So I remember, I remember that show, but one of my favorite memories is that song that you would go into the audience and bring him up on stage. Oh, I had to find a Mr. Lee. Yeah. You were so good in that character. It's so <laughs> funny. She was fun. Missy was fun. She and the glasses, really right? Those glasses. The glasses. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember she didn't really come to life until those glasses were on my face. And I went, oh, oh, this is who she is. I thought I knew who she was. Now I know. Oh. That's, a, that's an. We should talk about that later. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a note of that on my pad. Okay. <laughs> um, Hans. Yes. Peter Pan. Oh, Peter Pan. Ben Lehman. I enjoyed the pirate outfit of that. And I enjoyed- Me too. And I loved it so much. I have now like done Halloween in pirate outfits so many times. <gasps> Just the looseness of the pants and of the of like the little uh, white shirts they wear and the little sprays out on, on the arms. Oh my goodness. I, I loved, and even getting uh, my head cut off pretty much by children every single day. What did you, what do you mean got caught, like? Cause they were the, the, the end fight of Peter Pan. And you know, how, how, how all the pirates, we, we, well, for me, we got, we were knocked off into the ocean by, I just enjoyed, push, 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 and ah! <laughs> Little jump off the boat. It was so much fun. They probably loved it. Those kids probably like, Perfect. I can only imagine the joy that they had in cutting off your head. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Rebecca. Night of the Iguana. <laughs> oh my gosh. Can I do two words? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Clearly we have no rules. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my first word is rain and my second word is 
chicken in a can. Is that one word? That's three words. I gave you four words. Rain. It all counts. Okay, okay, Jessica. Let's talk about what is the chicken in a can? The chicken in the can is because every night for dinner in one of the scenes that we were in, we had to eat fish. And so they had this rubber fish on the table that they would fill with chicken in a can. <laughs> and so all of us would be sitting there forking at this chicken and pretending to eat as much as we, we had to eat some of it. And by the end of the run, we were, all, I like, I could never look at chicken in a can in the eye again. So no. I for one have never forked a chicken, but <laughs> I would try it. Well, maybe great <laughs> night of the iguana. <laughs> um, so, okay. So I'd have to say the costumes in that were beautiful too. Cause whenever I do the show, I do a little research and I look to those costumes. You guys were so cool. Those old tiny bathing suits were adorable. That was Lex Lang, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, that was so much fun. The costumes were amazing. Yeah. And Layman. Matilda. Corset. <laughs> and my second word would be asphyxiation. <laughs> <laughs> Rapping. <laughs> you, stop it. You were a dream in that role. I can't even think, I honestly, when I think of Matilda, it's like Miss Trunchbull. Um, you were so amazing. I think Bangor loved you. And we have Mrs. Wormwood here. I still see you dancing in those gosh darn heels in my head right now. I still don't know how you did it. I watched it every single night from the balcony. I'm still sore from it. <laughs> <laughs> and doing that number right now, Christy Robinson, <laughs> go! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you all, I am so happy you're here. That was fun, 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 fun. Um, before we do some questions, I have to do trivia because that's what I'm paid, paid to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, today is Broadway legend Ellen Green's birthday. What musical did she make her mark with? PTC also did this production starring Christy Robinson as a run. It was a Ronette. Is that right? Did I say Ronette? I was I was Chiffon. Chiffon. And Ben Lehman singing about some blood. <laughs> <laughs> So first to answer in the comments, we'll get a prize. I don't know what that prize will be. <clears throat> Depends if I'm like you or not. <laughs> it's a Venus flytrap. <gasps> oh my gosh, can you imagine? <laughs> oh, that's such a good idea. Okay, frog and toad. Frog, a year with frog and toad. Thank you for coming. <laughs> so, and you, scene. And scene. Go, everyone. <laughs> uh, you were frog and toad. What was your favorite memory? Like, what? It, like, just in general, what is your favorite memory of a year with frog and toad here at the Penobscot Theater Company? Dancing with that leaf on the ground, doing the <laughs> dual dance, and we had the leaf on the ground, and going and having to tap around it and, and work that out. That was so much fun. I loved it. I love That's that. Right. There was a soft shoe mm -hmm. um, that required us to take it, it took place in fall. And I think Nathan, Nathan Halverson had this amazing idea that we should dance with giant leaves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was so much fun. We almost slipped so many times, but it was still so much fun. So true. I, that is, I never, I did not remember that moment until just now. So before you, so you guys think about your memories, but I feel like I should say a year with Frog and Toad, those of you that missed it, it um, it's based on the stories Frog and Toad. And um, it basically starts when Frog and Toad wake up from the winter and the entire year is sung through through scenes and stories all the way back in the ends in Christmas. So it's a whole year in Frog and Toad. I know I just explained what the title was. I'm here to ejaculate, educate. I'm here to educate. <laughs> okay. Who wants to go next? Your favorite memory of a year with Frog and Toad? I'll go next. I have so many. Oh. It was such a fun show. I mean, like honestly, afterwards and seeing all the kids, his nieces saw it and they still talk about it to this day and they're like graduating high school now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but also I remember very fondly, I don't remember the name of the song. Was it Downhill? Downhill? Down the hill. Down the hill. And yes, and so... Dominic, the amazing actor Dominic Varney, and then <laughs> Hans would be doing that down the hill scene. And the three of us would be like watching in the wings because we loved it so much. I don't know if you guys knew that. And the snow would be coming down. Do you remember that? We would we would bounce with them. 
Yeah, that's right. Loop bounce with them, go down the hill. Yeah, it was the best. It was the most like magical, like Christmassy holiday vibe. Yeah, good, good stuff. I had no idea. That is so sweet. That really is. It makes me think of all the times I watch people perform on the in the wings during a show. I because I'm just in awe of the talent that we see here. So I have stories about that too. Um, anybody else have a favorite memory? There are way too many to like, I could talk all night about Frog and Toad. Oh, hands let's down. do it. <laughs> okay, hands down the most magical theater experience I think I've ever had. Um, and it, it just delightful all around. But one of my absolute favorite, like warm and fuzzy was hearing the very first student matinee, those children, when we came out, when the flowers grew out of the stage and when it snowed and I mean, the laughter and they were mesmerized. And that was the most magical feeling. I said, I never want this show to end. It was so great. Ben? Well, I loved the books as a kid. They were something that were special in my childhood. I even had a frog and toad like dolls that my mother made for me. So the show was already special for me that way. And I couldn't conceive of how they would make it a musical. And then I just fell in love with it. But playing a uh, large and terrible frog was always my favorite moment of any time, just because it was just so broad. And I like to play monsters and things. And it was just really, really a fun moment. But my <laughs> my favorite memory is actually a bonding moment between me and Christy because I played Father Frog and she played Little Frog, <laughs> the son, and I had to get very close to her face and sing. And I don't know if anybody knows this about me, but I, I have tend to spit when I talk and sing on stage in great volumes. And I was singing in Christy's face and I just saw one little winger of spit go and land directly on her nose. And she had to keep her character and she just went and kept on going with the scene. <laughs> there are many, many never. Things. She has never wiped her nose since. No, I know. <laughs> blessed. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> I, w I would agree with um, what you all said, <laughs> but I would agree with what Christy said about the kids. Like, I guess we've done a lot of kids shows like in the main stage season. We've done, not kids, we've done family shows in the main stage season, but this one seemed to be the first one that was really geared to grade school, like the littles. Like um, we always try to do things for middle school and, and, and maybe high school, but this seemed like, those little kids just fell in love with hearing those giggles and the fact that they got so excited when a plant came out of the stage. Like, it just makes you realize that theater is for everyone, right? I don't know. I still, well, I can still hear them giggling, really. It's, I think, was the cookie song the, the last song for the first act, right? Yeah. And yep. so I always remember that was such the man, most manic ridiculous, crazy, fun song. And that's where we could always hear the lingering giggles as intermission started. Mm -hmm. They, were, they went crazy. I remember the kids were just like screaming in their yeah. seats for that song. They couldn't wait for you to shove more cookies in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> As and I would have. The if there were more cookies, I would have. You, you did. You had a lot of cookies in your mouth during that time. I do remember like, mm -hmm. it's true. <laughs> so I was going to say, like, I was going to say like, so this is a great show for little kiddos, but at the same time, it was very challenging. I feel like it's a very deceiving musical for the people yeah. performing in it. Um, looking back, what was your most challenging part for you all in, in this production? For me, without a doubt, it was the dancing. I had never done any kind of dancing before then or been, you know, beyond really basic stage choreography, jazz squares and wiggle fingers, you know, step touches. Oh, I love your wiggle fingers. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Um, and it, for me, it was a real, real challenge because Nathan's steps were the real deal. And to even get them anywhere close to right for me was a real challenge. So well, I think the thing to remember too for the show is that there was Frog and Toad, but the three of you, Christy, Rebecca, and Ben, they played every single creature left in that forest and you had to be a different animal mm -hmm. physically and vocally throughout the entire thing. 
Yeah, but that was also as challenging as that was, that was one of the most rewarding shows to do because we had so many opportunities to just like throw it all out there, you mm -hmm. know, in so yeah. many different ways. Like I had a whole backstory for Mouse. Like I loved that so much. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of Mouse fun. was adorable. Yeah. <laughs> I wish these were moments I wish we could pull pictures, you know, from the art guys being like, that's Rebecca Bailey, it's a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> but sadly, we don't have that. It ain't that kind of show, people. No. But with that said, I think one of the most challenging things were like the costume changes and running backstage back and forth, like to get from one side for one dance number or change your outfit to be another animal entirely and then back and forth. Yeah, it's crazy. And the the score was very challenging too. It was like a '40s like yeah. theme almost, and uh, and that spoke with, to the dancing as well. Like the dancing was that way too. So um, yeah. the harmonies were really intricate and difficult, and we had to dance and get them right. And <laughs> but darn it, didn't we sound good together? Oh, we were like we sang like birds. It was, it was money. <laughs> oh. And who was it? Um, John Haskell was the music director for that, was it not? Was he? Yes. Yeah. So shout out to John Haskell if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> if Priscilla Poppycox is your cup of tea. Um, <laughs> so I'm trying to think the most challenging part for me. I think it was um, the uh, cookie song, only because I love cookies. <laughs> and I remember um, Nathan and Scott telling Hans and I, they're like, okay, we need to do this where you eat all the cookies mm -hmm. so that we knew what it felt like and how bad it would be if we ate all the cookies. <laughs> and it was so bad. And we, I mean, we were spitting out because we were eating and singing and we were just like, yes. there were chunks of cookies going all over <laughs> the stage. I probably <laughs> ate some of Hans's cookies. You did. You ate a lot of my cookies during that time. That's that was one actually the and one some of, the of it was in the me. show. Yeah, I was, remember the cookie spray and the lights. Like I have a <laughs> memory oh, yeah. of it right now. And you're as you're talking about it, both of you just <laughs> cookies yeah, everywhere. It was hilarious. Yeah. Every time oh. for Toad to eat more than Frog, that was the time. Well, one of many times probably from Frog to Toad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Um, Becca, you mentioned like you had a whole backstory to Mouse. How did you find everyone? Like, how did you just jump into your characters? Because like Christy played the turtle, Ben played the snail. Like, how did you just all of a sudden become that? Did you create a whole backstory for each character? Mine wasn't I was like, no, I I'm naturally a squirrel. <laughs> well, I remember Nathan working with us on physical choices and how things were going to be. Like for me, he was, we, we, I remember us having kind of like an argument about how, what snails, not an argument, but we had two different visions of what snails movement was going to be. And mine was that he was slow, but in his mind, he was fast, but he just didn't get anywhere. And Nathan wanted, you know, really, really slow. And we kind of like made, made it in the middle somewhere. There were, so I remember doing that in rehearsal and making those explorations about how they moved. And then that sort of just kind of helped everything else fall into place for me. You were so good as that sound coming out of my shell, that 11 o'clock number. Look, oh! People still, that's what they identify me with. I swear to God. There's a lady in our community who comes up to me and still calls me snail. And I don't Aww. exist to her any other way, which is really, really awesome. <laughs> <gasps> oh my gosh and um the i just remember the costumes being really cool lex liang did those costumes did you have a favorite one that you wore in the show i loved the wool suits i don't know christy if you remember those the little like wool matching suits that we had I, with our little suitcases it was, yeah. I don't know, I was so as the bird uh, yeah my bird outfit was my favorite too i had like this green it was an olive green suit with a Yep. a hat I just felt really like handsome and it, it was and I thought the three of us looked so good together in our bird costumes so yeah we looked like the Andrews sisters you did I knew someone was gonna say that yeah oh. I mean the style the way that we sang the way that we moved um it was yeah I really enjoyed the birds costumes and I loved my bathing suit which yeah. I normally 
with my swim cap, which that cracked me up every night that I'd put that on my swim cap. Just made me laugh for Turtle with the whistle. She was so mean. She was so mean. <laughs> Poor Toad. I know. Toad was great in his bathing suit. Great. I have nightmares about that. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to find it to wear tonight, but I think I burned it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh, it's so true. But I think that was one of the great conceits of Lex's costumes for that show, right? Was that you were in this like tweed or wool, like um, base. And then like, as you became these different characters, he found these really cool inventive like accessories that made you become these animals, which looking back and, and looking at those pictures, I think when we were in the character, it was like, really? Does this, am I really a squirrel right now? But like, when you look back at the pictures compared to everything else, like the hat you were wearing and the bag or the gloves that you had on, I was like, oh my gosh, just a squirrel. Yeah, I remember the squirrels were like these really, it was like just really cute tailored outfit with just like a pop of fur around the collar. And there's and like little, did you have little berets or something with ears? I mean, it was just like so cute. And I remember snails, all he was was a backpack and a pair of glasses, but all of a sudden it was like, mm -hmm there yeah. it was just what, really cool it was great design yeah. what was the animal becca you and i definitely played one i don't know if ben you did we were in trench coats and sunglasses that's the mole the mole oh, right mm -hmm. and you had like, a leaf you blower, see it, you the leaf blower. See it. Right. The leaf blower. we couldn't we couldn't hear the music at all i remember right. trying to count you know, we had that leaf blow because like, how oh, the wow. heck are we going to get all of these leaves off of the stage? The but leaf blowers! We literally <laughs> had to transition fall into winter in like one scene yeah. change. Yeah. <laughs> like, and we had trench coats and yeah. sunglasses, sunglasses. And we like Mission Impossible. Like a moment. sneak in moment, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> God, it was fun. Love it. I feel like PTC should find, I don't know if we took footage of this show, but I feel like PTC should find the footage of Frog and Toad and like share a scene or something, like a minute clip, because it was so inventive what you guys were doing. Like, oh, and if so my final question, like, I don't know, final question, because I could talk to you all night. Um, <laughs> um, but when you got cast in it, did you, like, what did you think? Were you immediately oh frog and toad i'm gonna play or like what did you i guess so, so i'm saying for my answer to that story is that i don't think i was originally cast i think it was i think someone else in the community was cast and turned it down i will not say his name um but i got the call and i remember being like so excited that someone had turned down the role and i was like yes i want to be an amphibian um but I think it's also, I think I grew up with those books too, like Ben said. And so the moment someone said Frog and Toad, I was like, I'm in, I'm in. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I will say that I expected, I guess, to be in a kind of like an easy kind of kid show. And it was a real musical, like 100%. And I was just in love with the whole process. So, yeah. I think maybe that's why, like, the ticket sales weren't amazing for the show. I mean, we were going through a crazy winter at the time, too. Mm -hmm. But I think I think it was deceiving. Like, people thought it was just for little tiny kiddos. But in the reality, there were so many adult, hilarious underlying themes and humor in that show. And, and I mean, you guys are right about the, the books themselves. I loved the books growing up. I loved reading them. And then when, when the animated movie came out, I loved watching that because it was it was just incredible to see. And uh, I was actually in the same situation you were too. Um, I got cast, but I was I wasn't the frog casted yet. And then I guess someone took turned down the frog, and I got to be cast as the frog. And I was just like, "That's awesome! Oh my gosh! Like that's going to be incredible!" And it was. It was so much fun to actually have the dancing, the singing, the the, the speeches, and the, the seasons, and everyone being there. It was just. It was absolutely fantastic. And I loved, I loved having the kids around. That was just like incredible, incredible to be performing for children to, you know, I was like, yeah, you're, I hope you have the same child life I do while watching this because I love the show. I love the books. I love the movies. So, well, obsessive. Are the movies you're talking about, Hans, the, the claymation ones? 
No, these one. I don't think these were the actual an animated one. At least in my uh, memory, it's animated. So maybe it could have been claymation, and I completely messed it up. But yeah. When you said actual, I all of a sudden went to like live frog and a live toad. Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember I read the books, owned them all, and then there was some kind of claymation series. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they were movies or or short. I remember like watching several short ones in a row which i don't know someone tell us put it on facebook tell us look yeah. it up put it in the yeah, comments it was, like it, it, was an, it was an hbo series hbo oh. put out like remember uh, fraggle rock was on hbo too when it first came yeah. out and they did those little special family series emmett otter's jug band christmas was on hbo originally and so yeah sorry i'm a fault of useless uh, no that's culture that's knowledge great. <laughs> that's great because i couldn't remember if they were episodes or if it was a movie or um but anyway it was that was a part of my childhood that that i watched and then i remember hearing about it as a musical and seeing it get nominated for the tony award and i was like frog and toad the musical a year with frog and toad and we're doing it all right let's mm -hmm. rock and roll and uh it was absolute magic the whole time and we were one of the first theaters doing it regionally which is pretty wow. exciting as well so yeah. yeah so um speaking of this i like this question um we we're talking about kids books so like growing up what was your kids what was your story was there a kid that, uh, children's book that you were drawn to growing up that you remember you're like that was my book was is there a children's story that you remember for me, it was Molly's Christmas. <laughs> I still have the book. It's about a little kitty cat on Christmas who, do you care? No one cares. Um, <laughs> who care? This is who, great. Um, it's, he goes upstairs and he want, everyone's talking about going, the, the Santa Claus is coming. So he goes upstairs and he goes out at the window on the roof and then someone shuts the window and Molly is on the roof for Christmas. <laughs> Oh no. Oh my <laughs> god. It all ends safely. Um but it was it just I, I always remember that story in Molly's Christmas. So um, oh, I remember that story too. Wow. I'd have to say my my favorite book uh or that I remember uh reading was I don't know the title, but it was all about a guy with a bunch of hats who's have them in a box and they get stolen by monkeys. <laughs> and the monkeys wear the hat on a tree. And caps which, for sale caps, yes caps for sale and yep. what's funny is that was actually the first show i was ever in as a child because we did it when i was in like in kindergarten we got to be the monkeys i got to be one of the monkeys who goes over steals the hat puts it on and goes up to the tree and the guy going you monkeys give me back my hat you have to go mm, 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 mm. you know <laughs> it, was, it was awesome i, I love being able to read it and i love being able to perform it so oh my fun. gosh. I actually, when you said the title and talked about the man wearing all these hats, I was like, that's Hans. <laughs> <laughs> right? Mine also deals with a lot of hats. I don't know. It's really, we've never actually talked about this. <laughs> Priscilla Poppycocks, bringing it all out, people. <laughs> Relationship therapy. Um, <laughs> no, it was a Dr. Seuss book. I think it was called Go Car Go, something like that. And it was about this character who would like drive around the city and or the town and, the, and in the trees, there would be pe people and there was a female dog who would wear a very fancy hat that would get bigger every single time that you saw her. And she would exclaim every time, do you like my hat today? Um, so does anyone remember that book? Vaguely, <laughs> I yeah. vaguely do. Yes, the hats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so hats. <laughs> I loved uh, Grover's the monster at the end of the book i can't remember the name of it now he's like whatever you do do not yeah, finish this book do end. not make it to the end of this book <laughs> and it's grover um i love that i thought it was hilarious hilarious yeah um the one i always ask for over and over and over and i have it in my collection, I have a very like small collection of kids books that I love like from my childhood, but the biggest one was Where the Wild Things Are. I wanted uh -huh. that night. I think I went through like a two year period of wanting that every single day in my life. So is there a stage version of that? There, there is, unfortunately, it's not very good. I've looked into it for a Dramatic Academy a couple of different times. There are two different scripts and they're both 
about 25 minutes and they're just, uh, it's not exactly what you would wish for. So perhaps we should adapt it, Donna. Yes. You all, I am just so happy that you got to come together and do this little reunion on Digit and Drag. Oh, we'll, nom- we'll use this show when we go up for the Emmys, okay? We'll use this <laughs> show as the contender. Um, before we leave, so just, um, is there a show you're itching to do? If there was a show that you could do right now, what, which one would it be if, if we could do it? I was just talking about this today with a non-theater person. And I was talking about how much I miss being on stage. I want to do Sweeney Todd real bad. It's like on the top of my list. Uh, So bad. And I don't even care. I just want to sing in the chorus. I'll be the beggar woman. I don't care. I just want to sing the music. You're not. I feel like you should be Joanna. I mean, I have the range. Sorry, (laughs) Becca. (laughs) You do. (laughs) Rebecca turns off her camera. She's like, (laughs) I am blonde and beautiful. (laughs) <laughs> is there something you'd like to do i've i recently went through a phase where i really wanted to go back and do importance of being earnest i don't know why i just love it so much and i'd love to see like a modern kind of take on it i think it could be mm-hmm. yeah but gwendolyn or cecily is the question I know. It, I I wouldn't even know how to choose. <laughs> They're both so good. She's so poised and demure. She's like, I would. It doesn't matter. Cecily. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Actually, I, I do have one. I would. I would want to do spam a lot merely because I. I find it so much fun. I, I like. I remember watching the show. I remember seeing like all the, the, the movies that they had before it became the musical and oh, and if I had to play a part, I'd want to be one of the guys with the coconuts. <laughs> oh, he makes all the horse sounds, right? I mean, yes, yes. Yeah. That would be great at PTC. Let's put a petition. Yeah. Bamala. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be fun. Um, for me, I, I mean, I want to do nine to five really badly. We were- Dolly, Dolly, it. Dolly! <sighs> It's just uplifting and so timeless and people, I don't know, people wanted it. People wanted it. Um, but also dream role is a uh, dot in Sunday in the park. Oh. Don't know if I'll ever get to it, I just went speechless. And that doesn't happen a lot unless I've got something in my mouth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, you guys are so awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. PTC, I know, I know Rebecca and Hans, you're not near PTC, but please know that you have a home in PTC. We miss you, we love you, we talk about you. You come to our mouths all the time. Um, but please, please, please come and see us when this all when this all goes away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not dishing and drag, because hopefully she'll keep going. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, hope, please stay safe, be kind. Everyone watching, I'm so happy that you tuned in for a little mini reunion of a year with Frog and Toad. The third question before we leave this little kit and caboodle tonight is the first person to tell me what their favorite children's book was growing up will win a prize and put that in the comments section, okay? Oh, so tune in next week for another little mini PTC reunion for one of the most loved productions, The Graduate. Yes, yes, yes! We're gonna have back on the show, AJ Mooney, Alex Sayers, Jerry Misler, and Jenny Hart. And I have got to figure out what I'm gonna wear to compete with those people. (gasps) Oh, I can't wait to disrobe it on air. I'm gonna take it all off. (laughs) Remember, please everyone wear your masks, stay six feet away, (laughs) schedule your vaccine, and please, please, please download my single, Living for Drag, to support the Penobscot Theater Company, iTunes, Spotify, TikTok, anything at all. Um, Please, please, please save a little love for yourself. Don't you dare give it all away. Thanks for watching Dishin and Drag. Hello, friends and enemies. No reason to worry or fuck with the knees. Who am I? What's my name? Priscilla Poppycock, and it's my game. Ready to slay, I'm painted up. My legs are crossed, and I filled my cup with sassy cues and some wits to gag. My lips are glossed, addition and drag. Dishing, dishing. 
edition in drag. Hold your pearls, Priscilla's in fashion, nipped and tucked and ready for action. Guests galore and games to play, cue spotlight, don't look away. Glitter and lashes on every curve, cinched up tight, I'm ready to serve. The saucy tea to make your tail wag, the curtains up, edition in drag.